everybody and welcome back to the channel now this uh, week's video is all about me testing uh, a camera uh, it was a camera that I had given a while back um, the camera was in great condition beautiful condition for its age and uh, everything worked apart from uh, the light seals had gone so it's taken me all this time to get round to replacing the light seals which I did yesterday and I just want to go out and test the camera to make sure there's no uh, light leaks so I feel confident when I go out again with it that everything's going to be fine. The camera is quite a special camera, uh, in my opinion. It's a camera that uh, was built round about 1973 to 1978. It's a Canon uh, SLR camera. And uh, the reason its production run was quite short was Canon, round about 1978-79, fetched out the Canon AE, uh, AE-1 and then the AE-1 program, then the A1 and these were uh, slight, uh, well, more advanced cameras than the, ca the camera that I'm going to show you and uh, it's, it stopped production of this camera but I'll show you what the camera is now and, uh, and why, why it's such a, a special camera So this is a camera that I had given it's the Canon EF uh, it came with a Canon FD 50mm uh, f1.4 lens which is marked SSC so I think that's something to do with the lens coating, but it's a very, very nice lens. It's a breech lock lens. This camera is special in the, in, in the respect that it uh, was built as a backup camera to the Canon F1, the professional camera. So it shares the same uh, chassis. The top plate's uh, brass. You can see where it's just wearing off of the corners. And it, it's, uh, it really is built like a tank. It's solid. It's a quite uh, heavy camera because of that. But it's a camera that feels like it will last uh, many, many years. Now, the camera is uh, special in a, th in, a, in a few ways. The first one being, it's the first camera that Canon actually made where they outsourced the shutter and it was made by uh, Copal. And it's a, a vertical travel shutter. I'll, I'll put the torch on so you can see it. So you can see it travels vertically and it has a lovely lovely action so that's uh, one of the reasons why is it why it's a, a special camera in the, in the canon lineup and then the other uh, reason why it's quite uh, versatile is that cameras of this era uh, tended to use uh, 1.3 uh, volt mercury batteries and uh, if you try and put alkaline, alkaline batteries into this or lithium batteries the button type batteries you're going to get the incorrect exposures because the voltages are too high now with this camera it has a dual circuitry in it and I think the uh, Canon F1 had the same where it will automatically adjust the voltage so you can put the 1.5 volt batteries in and it will down the voltage to 1.3 automatically and you will get uh, correct exposures all the time the other thing with this camera, uh, if we look at the top of the camera there, the camera will work without batteries from half a second right up to one thousandth of a second. So this is half a second and then right up to one thousandth of a second. Uh, it will also work in the B setting without batteries. Uh, to use the slower speeds, which run from one second right up to 30, uh, 30 seconds, sorry, uh, you need batteries for that. But to all intents and purposes, if you're out with this camera and the batteries go, don't worry about it. Uh, you can guesstimate the exposure, you can take readings uh, with a light meter and work from half a second right up to one thousandth of a second. So you, you have plenty of uh, shutter speeds to actually work with. So it's a, a really, really nice camera. It has a depth of field preview. If I stop the lens down, you might just see that. I'll shine my torch on it again by just pressing the depth of field preview button. It's got a self timer where you can cut the shutter. very quiet cell timer as well 
and then you can work in a stop bounce, stop down mode with this camera so you can actually um, stop the lens down using the lever uh, for lenses that don't have an automatic diaphragm. So all in all it's a really really nice camera and I'm really looking forward uh, to using this camera. As I say I've, I've replaced the light seals and hopefully everything's going to be fine. So what I'm going to do today is rather than just go out uh, photographing you know using the apertures uh, at different settings I'm going to try and leave it open at uh, f1.4 and just see what it looks like at the aperture wide open. Now because it's quite bright outside uh, there's no way I'm going to get uh, down to f1.4 because the sh maximum shutter speed is at a thousandth of a second. I'm going to need around about eight thousandth of a, of a second. So what I'm going to do, and again, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. I've got no filters that uh, fit the filter thread on this, which I think is 52 millimeter. Anyway, I found an ND filter, an ND3, and, and it just pushes in to the opening on the camera. So I'm going to uh, put it in there like that. And then just attach some tape around it so it, it doesn't fall out just lightly around the edge whoops like that and then it's not going to fall out and that now means I can get the exposures um, so I can use the f1.4 uh, aperture the film I'm going to be using is Ilford FP4 uh, the developer that I'm going to use again is Pyrocat HD uh, the light meter that I'm going to use for the for the exposures is this one. It's the Seconic L98A and it just takes instant light readings but uh, I found it to be a very handy little meter to put in your pocket and it's uh, very very accurate. Another important feature with this camera now apart from you being able to set the shutter speed and the apertures manually you can also put this camera into what's called shutter priority mode. It's like a, a semi-automatic metering. To set that on this camera, you have to go onto the lens uh, barrel. And you'll see on the lens barrel, there's a, a an A, that's for auto. And there's a little button at the back. All you've got to do is turn the lens and then press the button in until it locks uh, centrally on the lens. And now you're in shutter priority mode. And that basically means that you set a shutter speed, any shutter speed that you want, and the, let the camera will select the correct aperture. And as I say, that's called shutter priority. Now, personally, I'm not a big lover of shutter priority cameras. Uh, it doesn't really matter with me with this camera, because I'll probably just only use it, uh, using it in the manual mode. Uh, but for my type of photography, uh, I prefer... Uh, aperture priority where I've got full control of the aperture and not the shutter speed but it's still a very handy feature to have and this camera has both manual and shutter priority uh, metering. Uh, just before I show you loading the film in from the bolt loader I just thought I'd show you the bottom of the camera and as you can see it's got two compartments each holding one button cell and uh, one is for powering the shutter and the other for powering the uh, light meter in the camera and then at the bottom we've got uh, a battery test button there and that's the press that in to re rewind the film so I just thought I'd show you those two battery compartments of this camera but first of all I've got to load some film into this camera and I'm going to use my uh, bulk uh, film loader this one uh, it's loaded with FB4 so it's a, a cheaper way of buying film and uh, Reload it into uh, into some cassettes that I've used before and just left some of the leader. I'll just show you how I, how I load it uh, from the bolt loader into the film canister.
and uh, can you believe it's starting to snow now again I don't know if you can see it's starting to snow so I think that singles the end of uh, my outing uh, get these developed and just see if the camera's light tight which I think it will be and I'm finishing the day off with a nice cup of we won't advertise for them <laughs> so uh, fingers crossed as I say that the cameras are now light tight the other thing is as well the, the camera itself you know, this the black black beauty they call it um, I found it a very very nice camera to use uh, easy easy to uh, operate especially in manual mode just set your shutter speed in your aperture it's just the way it feels in your hand uh, the wind on's uh, you know brilliant on it really smooth and then you have this little button at the back which if you press it down jump now press it down you can't fire the shutter which again uh, you know they're just little things but they make all, all the difference and the, the screen uh, surprisingly enough through the ND uh, Z filter the Z stop filter uh, was quite uh, quite uh, clear I could uh, focus quite easily through it so the screen is very bright on this uh, on this camera although I am viewing it at f1.4 so it does it does make a difference but all in all very nice camera very well built and uh, it, you know it uh, it just feels really really nice in your hands to use and it feels like it'll last forever it's so well built
Right, that's the film developed now. Just leave it to dry. Uh, just having a quick look. It looks like the exposure all seem okay. I won't know until the scan, so we'll have a look at the uh, pictures next and see if they've uh, come out. Right, hope you enjoyed those uh, pictures taken with the Canon EF and the uh, FD 50mm f1.4 SSC lens. Um, 
as regards the camera i've shown you around the camera all its working parts etc and if i had to give this camera uh, marks out of 10 it's going to be well up there probably nine possibly uh, 10 it's one of the best uh, slrs i've ever used it's built like a tank it has everything on it that you need you know it's got depth of field preview self timer mirror lockup uh, shutter speeds run from 30 seconds to 1000th bulb exposure lock the list goes on it's a really really uh, beautiful camera is the canon ef they do sell on the auction sites from anywhere from about 70 pound to maybe 150 pounds if it's in a really good condition but if you could get one with this lens the uh, fd uh, 50 millimeter f1.4 you've got a really good uh, uh, kit there to go out and take some beautiful pictures as regards the lens uh, as you can see in the pictures that i've shown you uh, this lens is absolutely spot on uh, you know if you can get the focus right because uh, it's very narrow f1.4 the out of focus a uh, fall off um, uh, the uh, bokeh as they might call it is absolutely beautiful from this lens and um I did notice in a couple of the shots, if you get the background too busy, the out of focus can look a, a little bit too busy. But if you can get more of a plainer background, it'll take some beat in this lens uh, for that look that it gives. So if you've got a, a camera with a 50mm lens, a fastest lens, doesn't matter if it's 1.4, 1.8 or f2, uh, just go out and, and work at the wider apertures and use depth of field as a creative tool uh, in your photography. It's well worth experimenting, but uh, a great camera, great lens, and uh, I'd highly recommend it to anybody. Now, also in the video, I showed you me uh, loading film from the bulk loader. It was FP4. Now, in the past, I've used a Watson uh, bulk cut loader. These uh, come up quite readily on, on eBay. They're, they're a decent uh, bulk film, film loader, but uh, I decided... Uh, eventually to go for this one this is a uh, bobbin quick 135 uh, bolt film loader and to me this is the best one you can buy it's a beautiful one it's easy to use uh, it, you can, it even shows you how much film uh, you're using on the roll as it's going down uh, well on the dial on the uh, bolt loader we can see on that I've got 40 feet left of a FP4 it's loaded with and they're great of these because they make the actual um, uh, 35 millimeter camera more enjoyable to use because there's nothing worse than going out and loading 36 exposures and you go out and you might in one day take uh, 10 photographs a week later you take another 10 it can take you a month before you, you can get to develop uh, the negatives and see the pictures uh, using the bulk loader apart from it being uh, cheaper the film to buy that way it works out about half price buying the 100 uh, feet rolls uh, apart from that uh, you can load uh, uh, as many frames into the camera as you want so like I went out um, I didn't want to uh, uh, put a 36 exposure roll in so I just rolled off uh, I think about 12 uh, 13 frames from the bolt loader and it meant that I could go out take the pictures and then come back and develop and see the pictures on the same day so I, th I think they're really really uh, worth the money quite expensive to start off with buying the 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 bolt loader and the film but once you've done that uh, the the, uh, the film's going to last you a very very long time I also showed you uh, on purpose uh, developing the film uh, I use Pyrocat HD uh, to develop my FP4 but I just did that to show you how easy it is to develop black and white film it's not rocket science it's dead easy to do and I'm trying to uh, sort of encourage people to have a go at that uh, and to keep as I said in the last video keep film alive so uh, that's the end of the video hope you enjoyed it uh, if you have any questions uh, leave them below uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's uh, subscribed to my channel and all those that make comments it makes all this uh, all this uh, videoing and, and editing and going out and taking pictures worthwhile um, if you like the video please give me a like uh, better still subscribe to my channel and uh, thank you for watching and once again stay safe and I'll see you all in the next video